Right, so hello again everybody and welcome back. It's been a while, but today we're going to be taking a look at an Intel Mini PC from B-Link and it's called a GK Mini. It's got 8GB of RAM and 256GB of SSD storage, so I'm interested to take a look, see how it performs and is it worth the money. Right, so that being said, don't forget to hit that subscribe button and let's crack on. Right, so first of all, I want to thank B-Link for sending this product out to review. But I just want to say, just because they sent it out for free, doesn't mean I'm going to give it a positive review. Right, so let's take a quick look in the box. We obviously get the mini PC, the plug, we get two HDMI cables, and we also get a mounting bracket. Now, the box itself, it is what it is. It looks all right, but it is surprisingly light. On the bottom of the box, we've got two holes for the mounting bracket, We've got no ventilation, but it has got plenty around the sides. On the front of the GK Mini, we've got two USB 3.0 ports, a headphone jack, and also a power button. And then we've also got a clear CMOS button. On both sides, there's nothing really, just plenty of ventilation. Then on the back of the box, we've got two more USB 3.0 ports, a gigabit Ethernet port, two HDMI ports so you can have a dual monitor setup, and then we've got the power port and also a safety lock. So let's get it plugged in, and when setting it up, it's just like setting up any other Windows 10 PC or desktop. And one thing I noticed straight away is, I thought there were going to be loud fan noises, but it's really, really quiet. And once we've got it launched, I have installed a couple of things onto here just to save time. But as you can see, it's just like having a normal PC. If we just take a quick look at the specs, we're running an Intel Celeron J4125 CPU at 2GHz. We've got 8GB of RAM, and it's also a 64-bit operating system. So I'm not sure who this device would be targeted at, but if we just want to use it for general use, I want to open up a browser and say I want to go to YouTube, just so you can see how quick it navigates and how quick it loads stuff up. And I want to play some 4K video. Right, so we're going to play this here, see how long it takes. I'm not going to edit this, I'm not going to cut it, but I will skip the ad. In fact, I'm going to skip it now. That's how it loads up. I'm going to go full screen. It looks, it looks clean, it looks really nice. What's it like at... Uh, see, that looks all right. So now let's quickly just try one more, just to see how quick it loads up once again. Make that full screen. It's playing all right, it's playing decent. Take a quick look at what quality it's playing back in. Change it to 4K. And I don't know, it, it looks nice, the picture looks great, but you can just see a little bit of stuttering. Then what's it like at navigating to different channels and things? Just if you got it for one of the kids to just watch different videos. I was wondering why music was coming from it. It's all right, it's all right. One thing I have noticed though is the CPU does tend to max out quite often. So when it comes to multitasking and things, it does slow down quite a lot. Now, if you're getting it for general office work, so you don't want to spend a lot of money on an actual PC, so you just want it to do your work on and things like that using Word. I'm using this. I don't know what it is. It's just a cheap version. But as you can see, loads up fine. I'm going to start typing. As you can see, it works, it works sound. I also installed Bluestacks, which is an Android emulator. So if you like using Android apps or streaming apps, a lot of systems actually struggle to run Bluestacks. So for this to actually work with it, it were quite surprising. So once it's loaded up, if I want to click on a streaming app, get a couple of moments. I'm going to leave this in real time as well, just so you can see how long it takes to load and things. I want to watch a movie, click on it, click play. It'll start dragging your links. I can't play the links in this video, but I have been testing quite a few and it does work quite well when playing back. But one thing I will say is I don't know if it's because I'm used to quite a high end PC, so I'm used to it being fast. But I have found a lot of the time when I'm opening a browser, if I'm downloading as well, or I've got multiple windows opening, you can see it slow down significantly. So then once again, I don't know who this PC is targeted at, but I did try some high-end games. So I tried playing Battlefield 4, which granted it's an old game, but it really, really struggled. And 
And then for some reason, when I was playing it, I thought I'd just record that. And then I got an error message saying something had blown up, which made me quite concerned, if I'm honest. But nothing blew up. I closed the app, opened it. But just so you know, if you're wanting to run games like that, you can't. Another popular game, Fortnite. I also tried running that. I tried in windowed mode to start with. It was just stuttering. It, it was unplayable. And then I tried in full screen mode, as you can see here. And then once again, it was basically Don't unplayable. Do not make me regret this. And get that looper ready. We don't have much time. Now, it may be okay at running like low, low end games. If I just go into here, oh, don't know what happened then. <laughs> I'm going to open up an emulator, I've got a USB device, so re-dream. And I'm going to just quickly try a Dreamcast game, which a lot of Android devices struggle with. So I've got an Xbox One controller plugged in just to play it. Get a couple of moments. It's party time. Party time. <laughs> hey, it's time to make some crazy Does anybody remember this game? It's awesome, isn't it? Why am I in reverse? Oh, there we go. Sorry about that, love. Come on, jump in. Where are you going? <laughs> but as you can see, this runs really, really nice. And I've found this with pretty much all of them. I did try PS3. That doesn't really work. PS2, half and half. But for your Dreamcast, your NES, your Sega, everything like that, as you can see, it, it does run perfect. So you may be okay running some low, low-end games like emulation, maybe such as Roblox and things, but when it comes to your proper games, you haven't really got a prayer. I did start to do some benchmarking tests, and to be honest, it was taking ages. And then it's not really what my reviews are about. It's basically just looking at a product from a user's perspective. So opening the box up, having a look at it, getting it started up, and what are my first impressions, and would it be worth the money? So the GK Mini, in my opinion, it could be all right for people that are just wanted to do desktop work. It is good how it supports dual monitor setups as well. And it may be all right for general browsing. It's not the fastest in the world, though. If you're looking at a budget gaming PC, then this is definitely not for you. But I don't think it's aimed at gaming. It's around $230 for the GK Mini. And if you've got a laptop at that price, it'd be really slow and dog shit. So if you compare it to something like that, it might not be that bad. For me personally, when multitasking and the things I'd use a PC for, it's not something I'd be interested in. But let me know in the comment section down below what you think. Would it be something you'd be interested in? Would it be something that you'd use? Or would it be something that would stress you out? <laughs> if I'm going to give it a let's crack on rating, there's plenty of different improvements that could happen with it. It's not a high-end device. I'm going to give it a 3 out of 5. But obviously, that's just my opinion. Right, so this video's gone on for ages now. So that being said, I hope you enjoy the rest of your day. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button down below. And I'll see you soon. ta -da. Right, so let's take a quick look. Right, so... I don't know. <laughs> now, the box itself, it is what it is. Now, the box is set... Itself or itself? <laughs> Has he got his, his own? I don't know. <laughs> and obviously a power button, and then we've also got a CMOS reset button. Reset. Re <laughs> and then we've also got a clear. And then we've. And then we've. And then we've. <laughs> I'm gonna open up an emulator. I've got an. Uh, buddy. Buddy.